Hey, it's cause here. Um, so they have got a IBM Model M keyboard. Um, so it just happens to be the day after uh, the 30th birthday of this particular keyboard. So each of these keyboards actually has its manufacturing date. This one, let's see if it focuses here. Its manufacturing date is February 26, 1991. Today is actually February 27th, 2021. Um, so it's 30 years and one day old and this one actually happens to be one. I don't remember when I got this, but it's a little dirty. So I thought for its uh, 30th birthday, I'd uh, tear it down and clean it up and, and uh, it's probably never been opened. So uh, we'll take a look inside and see what's going on. So, don't need a whole lot of tools. You need a 7/32 or a 5.5 millimeter socket. It does need to be a deep one because a couple of these holes um, are kind of deep. And the regular socket will get hung up, so you do need a way to open it. Um, you need a couple of Phillips screwdrivers once we get inside, and then uh, we'll see what other things we'll need once we get in here. So let's. Uh, Pop these open. There are four self tappers alongside the back here. So just pop this open. So I've had a number of these over the years. I use these on an everyday basis. I've probably had a couple of dozen of these for the past 20 years or so. I think I dropped one screw here. I've sold a bunch of them and I probably still have maybe, uh, I don't know, eight or nine of them left. The values of these things keep going up. Um, I've been selling a few of them as people have asked me about them. But, uh, I don't know, if you're interested, hit me up. Um, but, you know, I'm not necessarily in the business of uh, selling them off. I actually have another one here that I'll uh, show in a bit. But here's a little ground cable that uh, we need to undo. Just use a little plier to undo this nut here. There's different versions of these with different size, these little circuit boards in them. This one actually I think is one of the smaller ones because this is actually a later one from 1991. So this one's got a couple of ribbon cables to just unplug. It's a little circuit board, set that aside. So people talk about bolt mods, so what people do is these plastic rivets. People will shave all these off, drill them all through, and they'll replace them with nuts and bolts. Um, sometimes you'll see these plastic heads broken off, so um, I guess sometimes there's reason to do it. Here you'll see a few of these broken off. Um, I don't know, I've never had a reason to do it, um, so I've never done it. Um, even with quite a few of these broken off, I've never seen them where they come apart. Um, so I've never really bothered with that. Uh, I don't know if there's, even if, you know, if they're not broken, you know, why bother with that? Um, so there's some trash here. You grab a, a, uh, a brush here and I'll brush some of this trash off. So obviously it's a keyboard, it's gonna get dirty. Now, one of the things with these keyboards is the keycaps do come off. Um, they do come two different ways. So these earlier ones, it's a two-piece keycap. So there's the outer cap here, 
and there's an inner stem. So if the stems aren't dirty, I usually don't bother um, cleaning them because there's all these nooks and crannies in them. And then you get these wet, and if they don't, you don't dry them completely out, the water will drip inside here and then they'll rust on the inside. Um, so I actually don't like getting these wet. Um, these keycaps, because obviously you're touching them, they'll get dirty. So actually what I do is I'll actually put these like in a sink and then just wash them with dishwashing detergent like every year, two years or so, and then it keeps them clean. So when I take all these completely apart, I'll put these in two separate bins, keep these dry, take these, stick them in a separate bin, dump them in the sink, wash them, dry them. Obviously these dry out a lot easier and then that keeps them clean. So I actually have two, two boxes and separate them out as I go. So I just do that. They pop off pretty easily. So that also means if you're one of these people who likes different key layouts, you can change them around. Um, People also make like, there's also like third parties that make different keycaps. If you like, if you, want, if you like those happy, hack, happy, happy hacking keyboards with uh, you know, blank keycaps, you can get blank keycaps. Um, they've made like custom keyboards for you know, different layouts, foreign languages, different colors. Also you notice as the caps come off, you can see all this garbage that's built out over the years of people have used them, drop their crumbs, staples, garbage. I got some compressed air, we'll blow this out. Brush them out, whatever. Um, you'll see in a second. But because of the stems, the actual mechanism is completely covered up by the stem, that even with all this garbage, you're actually not going to get trash. In the actual mechanism of the keyboard. So obviously you don't want to get it wet because the uh, these don't have drain holes. Um, some of the later ones that were made later in the 90s, they uh, did put drains in the uh, keyboards after design a little bit. Um, these don't have drains in them. Sorry, I started putting the stems in the wrong box. Um, but all this dry debris, they uh, don't get into the actual mechanism, so you can get these really dirty. And keyboards don't actually fail so they hold up really well in like you know dirty industrial use so you can see I mean, this one you know it's got dust and crud in it but you can see that you know even if it got really dirty you can see that how it's designed Unlike, you know, butterfly keyboards from MacBooks the last few years that you know, they got a reputation for, you know, got a little bit of junk in there and the keys will quit working or whatever, that these aren't going to suffer that 
problem. And also the stems are universal. Also the size of those caps, no matter what row they're in, they are universal. So you don't really have to keep track of which stems and which keys go where. So it's all blown off. It's all taken off. Grab a air hose. I just happen to have my air hose off my air compressor here since I'm in the garage. I'll just blow this out. That's better already. Let's take the casings. The casing's not that bad. Now the plastics, you know, molded all the way through in that color, so can scrub them down. So I'll do that a little bit later. So again, I'll take a brush. I'll stop the video, clean it, come back, reassemble it, I'll clean it up, put this back together. But one thing I did want to show before I did that is I have another one. This one. So this one's a little bit different. So you see, so this one, it's 1991 one. This logo here this is oval IBM logo. This one's actually older. It's got a square one. This one look at the date on this one it's April 4th 1986 so this one's actually almost 35 years old and these actually also have a serial number on it, it says ID number so this one says ID number 15734 it's actually really low it's a five digit number so there's a place online called clickykeyboards.com they uh, uh, refurbish and sell these things they also have an archive of the three earliest and most common uh, model numbers. So this one says PT No 1390131. So they actually have uh, an archive, both of the ones that they get and refurbish and resell. Um, and they also have uh, user submitted ones. And I submitted this one. Uh, 10 or 12 years ago and still uh, I think this is like the 13th oldest one of this part number that they still list uh, on their site to this day so this is one of the oldest ones um, that they've archived over the you know dozen or so years that they've been doing it uh, on their site so this one's not going anywhere it's pretty clean um, it does work I don't use it um, I don't know if this is a museum piece but one thing I did want to show is that it's 35 years old but you can still use it with something as new so this is 
my uh, Pixel 4a 5G. So this is a 5G phone. I've had this for I don't know, like two months. Um, and that this 35-year-old keyboard will work a with a brand new 5G smartphone. So I just want to demonstrate that real quick. Um, actually, I'll be right back. I need to get one more part. So another thing about these keyboards is the cables detach. So there's a connector there. It's a, it's called an SDL cable. Um, they're actually not that proprietary. Um, I've actually got an HP keyboard from the 90s that actually uses the same cable. So I've got an SDL cable plugged in here. It's got a PS2 connector on it. So these were um, the first keyboards. They're called the PS2 because these keyboards um, they didn't start with the PS2. These came on PCATs in 1984 when they when the PCAT launched. But when the PS2 launched in 1987, they also came with these keyboards. In fact, the round logo ones are the ones that ship with PS, IBM PS2 computers and this connector. So you take PS2, get a USB to PS2 adapter cable. Plug that in there. Take a USB uh, to a USB oh, uh, on the go adapter. So this is the one that happened to come with the phone. Turn on the phone. My phone, plug the adapter in, says choose keyboard layout. So it recognizes that there's a keyboard plugged in. You don't need to see my search history. So if you look here, right, you can see B, C, D, I'm typing. You can see down here I'm typing my keyboard. You see me typing background. It totally works. 35 year old keyboard, three month old 5G phone. Absolutely, totally works. What are the 35 year old computing device? Totally works. No hacking, just. $5 adapter you can buy, an adapter that came with the phone. Totally amazing. That's why people still want to buy these keyboards. You go on eBay, like nice clean one like this. Well, maybe not one this old, maybe this one. Someone might want to pay me 500 bucks for one that's this old, the low serial number. But you know, one of these 1991 ones that are much more common. Go on eBay, people pay 100, 150 bucks for a clean one. That's like known working. It's pretty cool. Uh, so, anyways, I will go clean that one up, and uh, we'll be back, and we'll reassemble it, and maybe plug it back into this phone, make sure it works. All right, so we're back. The cleaned everything. 
these have over here on a paper towel. I washed them in the sink, like I said. I've dried them out. Make sure everything's uh, dry. Put them out in the sun. And, uh, make sure, especially these larger ones. So these are one piece. They don't have a separate cap, and so the stems are built in. So make sure the insides of these don't have any water in them. Um, if you notice all these other pieces, I used some simple green and uh, paper towel, and um, just cleaned all those surfaces. I didn't. There's nothing to take apart. Like I said, if you wanted to take the actual mechanisms apart, you do have to take all these plastic rivets apart. Um, there's kind of really no need to do that. All right, so let me start putting all this uh, back together. Let me take this circuit board. Plug all these back in. So some of these actually have a. These have these uh, flex cables. Some of them actually have a. Uh, these yellow individual wires with plastic plugs on the end. So there are a couple different versions of these. So there are variations of these. Um, they are not interchangeable because obviously the uh, connectors are different. Um, the pinouts are probably the same. But obviously they're attached inside, so you can't exactly uh, interchange them. But other things like the keycaps and all those things are interchangeable. Um, sometimes the printing on them can be slightly different from one to another. At one point, I actually cleaned got probably a dozen and changed them all at once. And when I did those, I removed all the keycaps all at once and mixed them up. So I had like a thousand keys all apart all at once. And most of them matched up, so it wasn't a big deal. Alright, so the body of it's all together. All the stems. I said before, I didn't touch any of the stems. I didn't uh, clean them or anything. Um, they're two different colors, but I mean they're all the same. Doesn't matter what you do with them. I'm just gonna dig them out of the box and just throw them on in any order. care about the color order. I mean the keycaps cover them up so who cares? If you care, you can always you know make some pattern with them underneath or something. Um, the only thing you do need to be aware of so they do they are shaped so the 
how that taller end points toward the front of the keyboard. Also, the other thing is there are these larger keys, like I showed. They have the stems built in, so like the shift key goes down here. They obviously don't get these in them. Um, so they do, they do fit. Can't put them in there, but they don't go in there. Oh, in the order to take them apart. So notice the, when I took it apart, I took the uh, shell apart before I put the keys and stems off. The order you take it apart doesn't matter. Um, but obviously, if you're taking the stems off, kind of you know reaching because the body's here, it's a little bit harder to get the stems off when the body's around. Um, it's a little bit easier if you're going to take the whole thing apart, anyways, to take the bodies off because you can reach under the stems to pop the stems off. If you're taking the stems off for some other reason, then there's no reason to pull the uh, entire body apart. You can always you know, get a screwdriver or something and pop the stems off like that. You don't have to take the whole thing apart to do it. The other thing is sometimes these springs, they do kind of flop over and do this. You obviously don't want to put the pop the stems off when they do, when the springs are caught like that. So you want to make sure that the springs, now they don't have to be sitting in the middle. They'll self-center when you put the stems on. So just go ahead and pop the stems on. Now obviously there's 101 of these keys. You have 101 if you have one of the mini ones without the numpad, they'll, they do exist on these, 84 keys. Um, I did have a few of those. Um, I sold them really cheap years and years ago, probably 15 years ago when no one wanted them. Um, now those things are probably got 200 bucks. I sold those at a time when uh, I don't want of those. I also, probably about 20 years ago when I first had a batch of these, also had Model F keyboards. So those are the original uh, 84 key. IBM AT keyboards, those had the function keys over here on the left, and then they didn't have, they, all, they, all these keys were mushed together. Um, they're uh, compatible with these, but at the time, no one wanted those. Um, those, the, the inside mechanisms are uh, very similar mechanically they're actually louder um, so I actually threw those away now those things are going for even more money and people are paying upwards of 300 bucks I think Model F's um, those things are even heavier than these those things I think the the chassis on those are actually painted metal these are plastic a few years ago, someone was, someone was uh, putting together a project to start manufacturing those. I don't know what happened to that. Those are called Model F keyboards. I actually don't like the feel of those quite as much as these. people that are into those. So we're 
get in there. There we go. That's all of them. Box empty. All right. So now, got the rest of the keys. Now, obviously, the keys have to go where they belong. Of course, you want to mess with yourself and. Keycaps in random places and oh, oh. so obviously, if you're like me and you don't remember where every single key goes off the top of your head. It's nice to have another one nearby handy. So I've got my museum piece one over to my right. Just glance over and look at. Obviously, at this point, it'll work with you know, the caps anywhere. All right, because at this point, they all work.
arrows are a little tricky because they're shaped. You gotta look at the shape of them because they're gonna go that whichever way. ZXC uh, minus go this here and this go here. Um, ZXC AS go. Goes here. One uh, seven. It's the last. Mm. Eight. Uh, this is a O, not a zero. So you are P. So that's some water in that one. ASDFJGHJ. One tilde Q two delete STFG. Six screen page down, and I can start to see it all coming together. Uh, M dollar ASDF JKL. Not quite dry. Q to be your key. Six. Uh, screen. Uh, pause is the last one. And you come toward the end and kind of start running out of places to put keys. And then the space bar, so it's got the little guide bar. It's going to drop guide bar in here. There you go. So IBM Model M. 30 years old. Day after his 30th birthday. Now all clean, ready to go. So I'll go back in the house, plug this in, test it, make sure it's all right, make sure it's fine. Then get put away. Maybe someone will want it. Maybe someone with a February 26th birthday will want one. Oh, well, maybe someone born on February 26, 1991 will want it. Who knows? Anyways, sign off. Take care.